Dang. <laughs> so it's been a while since I've um, been playing this game. I might be a little rusty, but it's good to pick up where I last left off and finally get back to playing this one. I missed the last uh, stream where you were playing this, so... Um, the last time I was in the, uh... I was in the Dark World. Um, the dungeon was in the forest, and I had to go down a couple of holes. Mm -hmm. The ones with the Wall Masters. That's the last time I remember. Um, ah. Yes. Uh, part of which, you should have seen it. Like, uh, okay, so... You know that in every Zelda dungeon, you get a special item of some kind and you use it for the boss? Mine was the fucking fire rod, and I needed it so badly because the place was filled with so many mummies and wall masters, and those things are just fucking annoying. Meanwhile, the chat is making sexual innuendo jokes, saying, Oh, he's touching me! Because it's a fucking hand. <laughs> uh, Solarium, thank you for uh, hosting my stream. Yeah, those don't do shit. So yeah, that's been happening. As soon as I got the fire rod... God damn it, I jumped right into that fucking bomb. As soon as I got the fire rod, I was laughing like a fucking maniac. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. That's, that's a moment I will never forget. <laughs> Son of a bitch. God, this guy's fast. Get away from me. Fuck face. There. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, come on, push you know, all the way over there. There. Where the fuck did that guy come from? I'm a wall master shipping jokes. Oh yeah, that's right. Some people were shipping me with a fucking wall master. I shit you. Yeah, no, I shit you not. I was like, what the hell? What did oh, I do to deserve God. that kind of torture? Like, fucking seriously? <laughs> Oh man, like I think I remember that from the uh, from the first uh, stream that you did with it. The one, uh, like I was there for that one, and I remember that. Uh, that was uh, fun. Uh, which one was it? Um, it was through it was through the first part of the game. Like you were like I, I there had to have been wall masters in the first dungeon or something because I, I do distinctly remember. Uh, you getting shipped with the wall master at some point. Huh. Ah, d uh, fuck face. Okay, you know what? Get over here. Okay, you want to play that game? Ha! I got all my arrows back, fuck face. Ugh, I don't want to fuck with those guys. Those oh, yeah, there was, there, there was a Link Pony in the show once. <laughs> Um, what episode was that? I don't know. I am going to look it up, though. All right. Do -do -do -do. That will never get old. <laughs> do -do 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 -do. Oh, shit. How do I get... Wait, can I scoot through here? Yes, I can. All right, cool. Da 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 Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Um, so, same as usual, collecting fairies and filling it up in my jars. This one decides to oh, fly sorry. away. Flutter brother. Oh, yeah. Uh, what about that episode? That was the one where uh, Link Pony popped up, eh? Okay. Was, yeah, it was right in the scene where Zephyr was walking through. Like, Fluttershy and Zephyr were walking through town, and, <laughs> like, in the background, you just see, like, unmistakably Zelda Pone, or Link Pone. <laughs> got the hat. Yeah, the I remember it now. Yeah. And he's carrying the his wagon. Cutie, carrying a wagon full of rupees, and his cutie mark is a heart <laughs> container. Full of rupees. That's, that is the most surrealistic thing to be shown in MLP because of the fucking currency. Oh my god, that is like borderline, like lawsuit ending. I wouldn't say lawsuit ending. It, it's lawsuit pending. Yeah, no, like I wouldn't think it's lawsuit pending. Although I will give Nintendo does have a stick up their ass. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, 
But I mean, if the let's thing... plays are enough to trigger the copyright trigger, then like. <laughs> <laughs> warning I would like but something as you know something as silly as like oh no there's a reference of Link carrying rupees that's our character Sandeed. yeah if that actually happened though I'm pretty sure that almost everybody would like nobody would want to give support to a Zelda for something yeah, as as pitiful, yeah, no, that is extremely pitiful. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that in exaggerative terms. Like, right. there's always going to be consumers who will want to purchase the games, but for the most part, I will like. I will not be happy with Nintendo right there. And mind you, I've been a big fan of Nintendo growing up, so it's it's kind of a rough decision. Yeah, but I, I don't think they'd go that far. No. But, like, just... Like, there are two things that are so hilarious about... Wait, what's this? Oh, shit, I forgot about this. Huh. I'm just... Oh, sweet. Oh, my God, I hit the fucking jackpot. What Jesus. Did you just do? I, I blew up a. Uh, apparently, there was a fake, uh, fake chi, tree, and I blew it off. Ooh, I got a piece of heart. Um, and I just found a place that is filled with fairies, and I'm just like, fuck yeah! Wow. Yeah. So I already filled up my um, my jar with a couple of fairies, along with a uh, a blue um, a uh, what is that? The blue potion that revives your health and your magic. Ah, no, no, no! Don't touch me! Fuck! <laughs> Damn it! I don't have that power! Fuck! Anyways, back to that uh, that cameo. The thing that's so funny is that rupees are obviously the main currency in the games, but the currency in, in Friendship is Magic are bits. Right. And that is so weird! Unless they like, try to... It, Go ahead. It, it is the kind of, like... The rupees do look like the gems that Spike eats. So maybe it's not like currency. It's just like either food for dragons or like something for rarities, dresses or something. <laughs> Link, is there something you're not telling us? <laughs> he, he, he's secretly a fashion designer. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have guessed from his look because he looks very like... He looks kind of rustic and stuff, but secretly, he knows about couture and shit. <laughs> That's right, fuckface! Eat that! God, I've been using the word oh, yeah. fuckface way too much. It, it, it's be, like, it seems like it's your word of the day. Yeah, this is my word of the day compared to something like, I don't know, shit biscuit. <laughs> Rarity's building a Zora tunic. I you like know, I, I don't mind seeing that. I, I, I would see fan art of that. Fuck! Oh, wait, cool, I got it back. Haha, <laughs> sucker! Alright, later in Delirium. Oh, there's one other thing that I can do. I'll just have to figure out a way to get to it. Um, let me see if I can get to, because if I can get the flute, that means I will be able to have access to, f like, travel anywhere, um, in the light world of Hyrule. That would be really cool to have. <laughs> Fuck face. How does one do that? I have no idea. Anything in here? After wandering this world, I turned into this shape. I enjoyed playing the flute in the original world. There was a small grove somewhere where many animals gathered. I want to see that place again. I buried my flute there. Yes, I will. Da -da -da -da! All right. Time for a little side quest. <laughs> Ooh. 
I had to get this sooner or later, so might as well make the time. And there he goes. Oh, god damn it! I guess I have to give myself a little bit more space. Fuck! And there he goes. Alright, time to pull out the shovel. Da 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 Wow! Holy shit! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> wow. You just found the Ocarina of Time. Just a meat no, the thing that's so funny. Okay, so apparently I'm supposed to like dig just around everywhere. And I, as soon as I get started, boom, there it is. I didn't have to do a goddamn thing. Bam. They call him one shot golden fox. <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, cool, oh, bro. Flute. Yeah. A flute, huh? That, that's not an ocarina, even though it's, oh, it's my. a fucking ocarina. No, look, look at that. Thank you, Golden, but it looks like I can't play my flute anymore. Please take it. If by chance you go to the village I lived in, please give it to a tired old man who will find you there. Well, my mind is getting hazy. Let me hear the sound of the flute one last time. Yeah, no, I was thinking the, um... The, uh, the, the sand, what is it called? The Song of Time? No. Uh, like that. Do, 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 do. Uh, Mr. Joe, thank you, uh, for hosting. Uh. If we're being, if we're being real, I've actually never played Majora's Mask. Well, you don't even have to play Majora's Mask. You would play, um, Ocarina of Time. I haven't played a whole lot of that one either. Like, I, I've. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I'm trying to think how far I got into Ocarina of Time. Like. Oh, god damn it. It wasn't Hang that on. far. It was only like maybe a couple of hours in. Because I wasn't playing it at my house. I was playing it at friends. Okay. Um, My experience with Zelda is kind of like a bit of a flip-flop. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some Zelda games like this one that I really enjoy. There are some um, Zelda games that I enjoyed watching through gameplay. Like, I used to watch my brother play Ocarina of Time a lot, and I loved the journey he um, aimed for and how far he's gone. And it was interesting. Like, it's... He became a tree. Fluttershy's tree. Wow, Jinx! Jesus Christ! I'd like to be a tree. I like to be a tree. Tree, tree, tree. Woohoo! Uh, wow. Uh, I love 2011. <laughs> God, you know, it's just thinking about the Brony fandom, it's like night and day when I see about, like, when I look at how, well, like, what it used to be and what it is now. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of which, it's kind of depressing to an extent. It, it's, it's been very depressing. <laughs> given all the, yeah. given all the fucking drama that's been spiraling out of control, and, um, I won't say too much about it, just... The show itself it has some polarizing reactions, and it's happened more than it needs to. And I, right. a lot of us did not really want it to come at that. And when you compare it to, like, let's say Gravity Falls, or you compare it to another popular show, it's like night and day in terms of storytelling. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that MLP is bad, but it does have its problems. Some, yeah, like, I feel like for this season, they've, like, season six kind of was a lower point in the series. Oh, yeah, no people. doubt. That season to me was garbage. But season seven really stepped it up, and season eight seems to be continuing that trend, because, like, there's, we're, like, what, eight episodes into season eight now, and, like, yeah, only been, like, if you just, okay, about like, ten episodes if you just include the, uh, the fucking leaks. 
I have not seen any of the leaked episodes, so I can't I can't speak to any of those episodes. Good yet. on you. Good on you, because leaked episodes hurt the show. Mm hmm Definitely. Yeah. But even with the episodes that have aired, like I feel like only one of them is uh disliked universally, that being non compete clause. Yeah, no, I, I hated it. Go ahead. Every other episode of season eight, though, like, at solid or better. Uh, I did not like the mod couple. And I yes. was, yeah, I was also indifferent from uh, Fake It Till You Make It, because it felt so incomplete. Grant has gone wild. That, that's when things started to pick up. But then came Surf and Turf, and that was a very powerful episode. Mm-hmm. Um, Most definitely. Horseplay was more cute and silly fun, but it definitely delivered its message too, so I'll give it that. Um, what was after that? I'm trying to remember. Or, no, Parent Map. Mm, yeah, it was. And now when I was like, I was kind of confused, and this is regarding like Starlight. Like, obviously, we see the, you know, the parents of Starlight and. Um, um, Sunburst. Sunburst, yeah. But we see that Starlight's father is so overprotective about, like, well, to an extent where he'll overpamper her. Which kind of begs the question, given the motivation that she's had throughout the entirety of this series, how is it that she didn't, like, she was able to phase and her father did not pick up on it? Yeah, and how did she, like, how did she not get another friend with like a, like you would think that with a parent like that, he would at least be like trying to get her to find more friends or something like that. But like after Sunburst left, she just kind of reclused. Is that a word? Uh, let's see. Rock Stalling says he was living in a fool's paradise. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and she had her, like, goth phase. That was everything on your end. That was so weird. The way it moved and everything was so smooth, and yet there's that face, that Rainbow Dash face from Daring Don't. <laughs> yeah. There's always going to be that one dramatic face or expression in an episode, I swear. Yep. It almost feels like they're trying for meme faces. <laughs> Like they're tr like they're trying to end up on like webms. I will grant you, season six did have its fair share of like really freaking strong episodes. Oh yeah, no. Um, I actually enjoyed Hearts Warm and Tail. Dungeons and Discords was fun. Saddle Row Review was very creative in its framing. I w I was a big fan of Saddle Row Review. Oh yeah, I loved it. Go ahead. Gauntlet of Fire. Gauntlet of Fire. I'm. I think it's a really good episode. It hasn't held up to me as much. Um, I would probably have to watch the episode to get, uh, again to see what else I could think of. But yeah, and it, this might just be... This is kind of a hot take. I think Heart's Warming Tale had the Whoa, best music in the entire house. series. Hi. Everybody? Aeon of Dreams has entered the building. Hi, faggots. <laughs> I'm streaming right now with uh, Nikki. Oh, hi, Nikki. Fader. Fader. <laughs> okay. Know, where's, you know, because uh, someone took a rally spot. We don't know where to park. Oh, shit. Okay, there's a customer parking uh, sp uh, section on the other end. So they won't mind if we park overnight? No, they don't want that. Uh, they, excuse me. They won't mind that. Katie used to park there. Okay. Here's your hammer, by the way. Oh. I was going to rob you with it, but no. <laughs> I don't know what the hey, fuck he's going to Yeah. <laughs> um, what other episodes did I like from season six? Um, uh, Flutter Brother? Flutter Brother, I'm one of those few people who really like the episode. Everybody says, oh, Flutter, uh, Zephyr Breeze is such an asshole. That's the point yeah, of the fucking is. episode. But he gets better at the end and like grows and shit. Yeah, people say like, oh, he doesn't change. Yes, he does. You you don't like his personality? 
Yeah, no, like, yeah, I get that at the end, like, he goes to crash with his parents again, but he's not being a freeloader. The thing that's, yeah. the thing I really love the most with uh, Zephyr Breeze's character on the levels of a role model, not his personality, is that he had this talk uh, when he's at his uh, complete bottom that uh, his fear of failure, he says he will might as well not even do it at all. And I can see so much of why that is a, such a thing. Like, that's so good. Yeah, and I thought I thought that was very clever writing, and that alone, like, I really could not stand Newbie Dash. Like that surpassed Super Speedy for me. Mm. At least Dave Rapp, I think he made a really good comeback with Flutter Brother, because mm -hmm. that actually dove into a further um, idea towards um, the topic of tough love, and that's what Newbie Dash was going over. But that hits that had its own issues. Right. He he wrote those two episodes. That's it. That's all I know of. No, oh no, he also did Where the Apple Lies. Where the Apple Lies. Me. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Like, I don't hate the episode, but I was kind of annoyed that when they, the way they wrote Big Mac's character, he used to talk a lot when he was uh, younger, but the reason why he stopped talking because it got him in trouble. Most of the episode, he was being the voice of reason to Applejack when she was yeah. making all those lies. So he should have spoken up. I thought that was a really dumb excuse as to why they didn't give Big Mac um, as much dialogue throughout the series. They even played it up as a joke uh, throughout season four. Oh, and he also wrote a uh, horse... Or no, a parent map. Wait, he did? Mm-hmm. I thought that was written by someone else. Well... Yep. Okay... I don't hate Dave Rapp. I just really, really hate Newbie Dash. That's I, fair. Like, yeah, and by and Ronnie ripped that one apart. Yeah, no. Um, by the word hate, I don't mean like wish death on them or any of that bullshit. Like, of course, of course. No, he he's not my least favorite writer. My least favorite writer who's been creeping up so far is Josh Hamilton. He um, um he wrote Parental Glidance. Not a fan. Oh, thank not you, not God. I was so angry after that episode um ended like that third yeah, act like it's like, <sighs> like who do we root for in this one this yeah i like... the whole time i was on dash's side she had every right to call them out i understand that there are parents who are sweet and they're willing to do anything to be with you and make you happy but you also have to have a limit and the thing that yeah. irritates me is that they're writing this out as if parents are always in the right no matter what and that is a bullshit message Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. For any sports fans out there, I present to you LeVar Ball. Not, to, like, like even just little bits and pieces that annoyed me. Like, there was, um, there was a scene, like, it was the on, it was the ongoing joke of, you know, the parents overly cheering Dash over every scene. There's one where they have a rocket launcher of fireworks shooting off, and it almost hits one of the Wonder Bolts. I'm like, dude! Do you have any yeah. idea how irresponsible that is? And no one's it's doing anything about it? And after somebody so calls out on them, Dash is in the war on and she has to kiss their ass. No. That, uh, that is just so much no. Oh, great. I turned so, into a rabbit. There we go. Oh, no. Uh, so the other episodes he did were Triple Threat, Secrets and Pies, and Fake It Till You Make It. Josh Hamilton? Yeah. Okay. That's not a great track record. Secrets and Pies I also had issues with. Like, it's just one long-running joke. That's all what it was. And it got kinda, so tiresome. Yeah. yeah. And the way it was played up, it kind of kind of made a bit of a bad message right there about, you know, lying. Sometimes you have to lie to spare your feelings. Being honest is one of the most important things to have. And it's and the way everything was executed, it was too mean-spirited. Yeah, I did like Triple Threat. That was kind of a fun Triple one, Threat like... was an interesting one, and I like the idea of Spike taking um, taking responsibility of uh, trying to work with other races and such, such as the Changelings and the Dragons. Mm -hmm. The direction they were aiming for, yeah, most of which was awkward, but I was able to deal with it. Yeah, it, it was fun awkward. It wasn't like cringe awkward. Yeah, no, it's not, oh, here are the Wonderbolts, and they come and say that it. No, fuck that shit. I'm out. <laughs> Hey, what's up? Right. We're gonna we're gonna do an epic meal time. We're gonna get high. Oh my god! All right, well, have fun. 
Oh my god. Hold on. There's Josh Hamilton and there's also Josh Haber. You sure Josh Haber didn't write Triple Threat or was that someone else? I am on the wiki page right now. Okay then. So Josh Hamilton also wrote Triple Threat. Yep, and I I quite liked Fake It Team Make It. Like it, it felt like a good like progression for Fluttershy's character because like she's been very steadily getting better with her like Oh uh, yeah, no, her development nice. has been beautifully showing. Like I especially uh loved her moments that shined in a uh, Flutter Brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Flutter Brother was fantastic in that regard. But yeah, Fake I know. Like Go ahead. It, it had some great bits like that, and I especially loved, 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 loved her, her like, um, uh, what's it called her characters, like the uh, preppy shy was just like, whoa, that pony is woke. I didn't mind most of the episode in Fake It Till You Make It. The ending it felt very incomplete, like a part of it which. It was a little bit rushed, I'm not going to lie. The way it was handled, or the way it was shown, it was... Okay, so Rarity sees that the way Fluttershy is handled in the store, it's too out of control, and she decides to fire her. Um, And it was said that she's no longer attending to the uh, fashion show. I thought she, it was only temporary that she's just visiting to fix a problem. And then the episode just ends, and then... Um, I was told that she fired Fluttershy. Well, didn't she fire their personalities? I mean, that's a bit unclear right there. She, well, yeah, she did fire, like, the three... Like, she literally fired all oh, three okay. of them individually. Yeah. <laughs> Using the term. No, Rockin', that's, that's, when, that's when it got great. Like, that, that for me was the moment when it was just like, okay... This just went from an A to an A minus, or an A minus to an A. <laughs> what the but, hell is um, that noise? Oh. Hey. Yeah, it did end on a weird note, but. Uh, Golden. Hey, what's up? Oh wait, you don't need to keep this secret. It's legal here. Yep. Oh. Eleven OG. By the way, oh. hang on. Nightfall wants to boop you. Nightfall wants to boop you. I'm wearing headphones, oh, I so. Boop. I boop uh, Nightfall back. Uh, Nightfall uh, gets booped back by Aeon. <laughs> So yeah, um, what, what other writers have been kind of doing good in the later seasons? Um, I've been kind of losing track with some of them because I've been more focused yeah. on the episodes themselves. Like when it comes to episodes and let's say there's a new character, I often forget the new character's names because I'm more focused Fox, on what they're doing. Here, right? What's up? Yeah. Here, right? No, there. it's over there. Okay, sweet. Yeah. This is such a like, ah, Jesus Christ, I'm going to fucking yeah, circles up. here. It's on the counter. So you guys are gonna do an epic meal time with a cake? Oh, uh, not a cake. We're making carbonara. Oh yeah, that's right. You mentioned that. Oh god. <laughs> you know, speaking of um, epic meal time, actually, Nikki, do you watch Epic Meal Time? Um, a little bit. Uh, I I've watched I a little to... bit. Mm -hmm. I I I've watched them a little bit too. But you said you subscribe to them. I'm subscribed, but I don't watch every episode they do. Also, favorite student six, uh, I would go with Yona. Fiona? Favorite st oh, students. Oh, um, I don't know who I like. Who's Fiona? Uh, Yona, the yak. The yak. I like the yak. And this comes from somebody who fucking hated Prince Rutherford. Oh, yeah. It's like, Ruth Rutherford was a dick. At, at least at first. He, like, he got a little better in... um. Not asking for trouble? But not actually not asking for trouble was when I really started to hate him because he was choosing his own pride over the safety of his entire people. And the way yeah. he accepts help at the end, like he thanks Pinkie Pie, but real, for what? There was a real king in history who did that. It was a what? There was a real emperor in history who did that. He got murdered by his brothers. Well, you know what? Serves him right. <laughs> Shaka Zulu. Shaka Zulu. Is this from Dynasty Warriors? No, this is actual history. He, uh... Well, uh, Dynasty Warriors is based on the actual people. Well, yeah, yeah. He, um... He had, um... Yeah, I need to jerk myself out. Like... Oh! 
Did somebody assume your gender nightfall? I'm sorry. <laughs> um. Oh, GM Barrow. Like she's she's kind of killing it right now. I actually like some of GM Barrow's episodes. Um, I'm one of those people who like the one pinky nose. That was really fun. Oh my god, that one is just like oh. God, just uh, so many expressions, and god damn, mm. just the intense of how much she's like, she's really like trying to hold in her extroversion. Yes. Ex uh, she also, she also did uh, Fluttershy Leans In, which is sneaky good. Fluttershy Leans In, I liked it first, but then I've heard um, some issues from uh, British Ninja, and mm -hmm. I don't hate it. It was just one of those episodes that made me feel like I was just blindly entertained. Yeah, like um, I, I like, how, like that to me was the moment when Fluttershy was just like, "All right, she is officially not having anything of anyone's shit. Good job." <laughs> like she basically told the the three like people that she employed to oh, fuck yeah. right off. Oh yeah, no, because the ep experts did not listen to her, and that's something in which I have to give her credit for. You know, she will know when to uh, step in, but she still has that sense of kindness when she needs. Um, when she, uh, you know, speaks up. And that shows mm -hmm. so much progression on that end. Um, yeah, Dar Daring Dunn, which was... Daring Dunn, I like that they addressed the history, but the fact that everybody else was hit with the idiot stick made the enjoyment for the episode a little difficult. Yeah, that wasn't great. And also, Granny's Gone Wild, which was terrific. Oh, I loved Granny's Gone Wild. God, I really loved those old ladies. Like they, they really, I really enjoyed their characters. Yeah. Like, like hey, let's go ride on this one and such. And Dash is all overprotective. It's a. <laughs> yeah, like that was an episode where I felt like nobody did anything wrong. Yeah. Like even a even AJ, who's kind of like, yeah, she's a little overprotective, but like. She but she wasn't. She on. wasn't like some pony to watch over me, overprotective. It's when you right. think about it, it's reasonable because they're elders and they've gotten old to the point where their bodies are now weakened down, and that makes yeah. sense. The part, I, yeah. the part that always gets to me is when you know the head pops out, going all too excited, and she and like <laughs> at, at the third time she's like, "Do I really need to say anything?" <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, Rick and Morty was in that episode. Oh, uh, Morty. Uh, uh. Yeah, that was good. Ugh, I'm going in circles here. Where the fuck am I supposed to go? Yeah, Grant, like, AJ kind of didn't deserve the wink at the end. Like, he hadn't learned anything, at least not yet. I, I'd, I'd, like to think, I'd like to think that when they got back home, they were just like, Hey, AJ, how about you fuck off? Have you considered, have you considered fucking off? I thought it was I thought it was a cute little thing that she just winks at the camera because at the end yeah. of the day she did have the right intention so I'm not gonna go and just assume oh she was she doesn't deserve that kind of respect to give a wink to the audience mm -hmm. um, uh, Joanna Lewis jo has oh yeah Joanna Lewis and uh, Chris um... shit I forgot what the names were yeah, I was going to say, like, Joanna Lewis has, like, she's got a bunch of episodes. A lot of them are really good, but then there's two of them that are just like, <sighs> And what are they? Top Bolt and Celestial Advice. I liked Celestial Advice. Top Bolt, I I didn't like and thought that Spitfire was much worse in that one than she was in uh, Newbie Dash. Yeah, Top Bolt, not great. Like, it's like, uh, codependency, the episode. But, uh, it just shows. Yeah, it, it just. It, yeah. I, I could go on a tirade about Spitfire, and obviously a part of which is just the way she was acting in Newbie Dash. But in Top Bolt, there's one scene that really pissed me off, and it's it's midway in the episode where uh, Vapor Trails and I forgot the other uh, Stallion's name. Like he's his confidence. Yeah, his confidence is like drop bottom, and he's on the Dizitron, and he's not doing very well. Spitfire comes yelling at Dash, going, "You want to tell me what's going on, newbie?" And she whistles at her. Hey, Spitfire, here's an idea. Fucking help out. That's being more of a boss instead of a leader. Yeah, well, like, well, okay, so I kind of see it from her perspective because it's just like, okay, so she leaves, and when she like when she leaves, everything's fine. 
everything's going good and then and rainbow dash is in charge for a little bit and she comes back and then vapor trail and what's his nuts doesn't even want to do it anymore it's just like what the shit did you do and she th th that's the thing with spitfire she did nothing in that episode except oh, yeah. yeah she did she did fucking nothing yeah, like, I, I am firmly of the belief that at some point Rainbow is going to become the new head of the Wonderbolts. If she becomes she the new head of the Wonderbolts, I really hope that she becomes a much better leader. I mean, based on what she's learned from other episodes, I think... It'd be she... hard to be much worse. I'm sorry? I said it'd be hard for her to be much worse. Yeah, no, based on how reckless and stupid Spitfire's been acting in the other episodes, mm -hmm. I think this is kind of... If it does, I will be happy with it compared to what Newbie Dash was doing, and I think that would make up for the issues with Newbie Dash because uh, it's it's Dash identifying with the problems of what the wonderful uh, what the wonderful group uh, the Wonderbolts are doing. Wow, I'm trying to find you know all those terms right there, and I completely stutter. Um, I'm trying to retract my train of thought. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah, Damn it! I lost my train of thought. Fuck. Damn it. Well, no, just uh, okay. I'll, so I'll just go ahead. Okay. Uh, I was just gonna list off the episodes that Joanna Lewis did. Like, all right, the, the good ones at least. So she did Castle Sweet Castle. That was Rarity an okay episode. Rarity investigates. I liked. The ending was way too predictable. Oh sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, the hoof, the hoof fields and the Colts. That I actually really liked, and it's not because of the historical reference they were making. It's because it's a very interesting take on what happens if you rely too much on just nothing but hatred. It's it's right. it's a very good you know metaphorical demonstration of how it damages yeah. you know yeah, your mental health, your at yeah, and this overall environment that it also hurts everybody else, and the animals are that example. Mm-hmm. All right, so we also got Gauntlet of Fire. Gauntlet of uh, Fire was enjoyable. Top Bolt, Celestial Advice. And then, coming back up, All Bottled Up. All Bottled Up I did not like. Trixie was I, I, Trixie was such a bitch. And everything yeah, that Trixie, Starlight was going through, I felt so bad for her. Yeah, Trixie's kind of an asshole. Like, there's really no way to get around that. Trixie is... Trixie is a fucking ass but like her like her relationship with starlight it just feels it's so, so unhealthy it's disturbing oh i it's kind of unhealthy but it's also like like starlight kind of has at least a what's the right word like she can pull the choke chain and just get her to calm down for a second you know what i mean yeah uh and also a royal problem. Fuck yes, I love that episode. And the perfect pair. Beautiful episode. Literally the the two best episodes of season seven. Yeah. I've Did heard like I've heard the criticism that um we don't really get to know who Pear Butter and Bright Mac are, except just they had a huge romance. And I'm just sitting there thinking, you know, they had different traits that were passed on to Applejack and Apple Bloom. Yeah, like, what we know about them comes from, like, what we know about the Apple family. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Oh, um, speaking of Trixie from the Jinx Place, uh, anyone want an episode of Trixie meeting her dad? I don't mind that. You know, as much cool? as, you know, as much as there were other characters I cannot stand, it's good to, you know, get some development out of them. So that way it helps open, broaden uh, everything up. I, I get the feeling that, um, at the very least, Trixie knows who her dad is. Uh-huh. Like, I don't, I don't know if her dad knows about Trixie. Uh-huh. Maybe. But, like, I, I get the feeling that Trixie d does want to, like... She kind of wanted to emulate what he does, mm -hmm. what Jackpot does. So she kind of, you know, went down the same route, wanted to be a magician too, just like her dear old daddy. Yep. <laughs> also, good night, uh, Damon. Oh, okay. Oh. 
right, you dumbass. But the yeah. door was right fucking there. All right. But yeah, I think that'd make for a fun episode. Yeah. Um, I, I'd always be good uh, to see the ponies head back to Las Pegasus. That's one of my favorite towns to go to. Yeah, no, Las Pegasus has become, uh, like, funner to check out, like, every time I've seen that place. I also... Yeah, I, it's it's Easter Egg Central. Easter Egg Central. <laughs> yeah. I, I guess you could say that. It, it just looks like a really fun place. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, that's something with uh, how people feel about Las Vegas with all the gambling and shit. Yeah, it, Fuck! They made it look like the world's biggest Dave and Busters. <laughs> yeah, the biggest Dave and Busters. That's the best way to describe it. Oh, shit. Oh, man. Last time I went to Dave and Busters, I got kicked out of the go-kart go track. Aw, uh, what'd you do? I spun out some kid. Oh. Yikes. <laughs> Like I, I, like back then I was really competitive. So there was this kid, like he, he was about my age. Like we were both, like I was fifteen, he may have been twelve or something. Fuck. And, and like I was trying to get around him, and he just would not stop blocking me. I was faster than he was, but he wouldn't fucking get out of my way. Oh boy. So I spun him. <laughs> oh. Fuck. Fuck me sideways. I have to. Oh, God! Yeah, <sighs> Rockin's got the right idea. Rubin's racing. What movie Son of a bitch! I'm dead already twice? That was Days of Thunder, wasn't it? I feel like it was. You mean that racing movie with Tom Cruise? Yeah, that one. Rubin's racing. That's where that one came from. <laughs> oh, and, uh,. One last thing Joanna Lewis did, she also uh, wrote Legend of Everfree. Oh, yeah. Which I, which I have not seen. I, I It's it's entertaining. They actually have a very good uh, villain character. I'm not going to give out any spoilers or anything like that. That's the one who's super into, like, preserving Ooh, the... Come here, come here. The, Shit. The no, come here. Something? No. No! Damn it! That fairy didn't want to come to me. Why? <laughs> but yeah, the, the villain you're talking about is the one who like really wants to protect the Parkers. Glorios, uh, Gloriosa, I think the name was. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll be honest, the Equestria Girls franchise didn't quite hook me as much as the series did. Oh yeah, no, it's, it's it didn't do much for me either. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I watched the first two movies, and, like, Rainbow Ox was good, but it, it, at least it was better than the first movie, but it's just, like... I liked friendship games more. Yeah. Like, that's what I keep hearing. Like, the later ones definitely improve on them, but it's just, like, I don't know. I, I do quite like the, uh, the, the shorts that came out that kind of center around them. Huh. Like... Did you see the one where um, Starlight comes back to um, Equestria and, like, they're, they're looking for the Memory Stone? Oh, yeah, no, I thought that was a pretty good episode. Um, yeah, like, Twilight was so good in that. Like, her freaking losing her mind when, she, when she's, like, going into the part of the library... Mm -hmm. Like Starlight's like, are you sure you can handle this? And Twilight's like, don't ruin this for me! <laughs> oh my god, she... Tara Strong had a field day with that one, I can just tell. Sunset, did I say Starlight comes back to Equestria? Frick. Fuck! I bet. Oh, there's a second floor. Rock and Stallion wants you to go back to a certain room really badly. Go back to that room. Hang on. Because there's a delay. Yeah, because there's a delay. There's always a... Um... Yeah, I'm going back to the chat to see if I can get a little more information. I'm like, I'm barely even paying attention playing this one. I'm having too much of a good conversation. <laughs> Oh, man. Fuck! Shit. Well. 
Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a bit of a break here and then hopefully pick up where I last left off and maybe finish this dungeon. 